In this video, we'll be supersizing our hero component, then we'll give our hero service some upgrades of search, delete, and add, starting now. So at this point, we have a hero service and we're doing get heroes. What we really wanna do is we wanna have a private variable here that's a hero array. And we're just gonna call that heroes for now. And I'm gonna set that equal to null. And then what we're gonna do is instead of just right away returning this, we're gonna set this to be equal heroes. And then we're gonna return heroes here. And that'll give us the ability to have that cached off so we don't have to make that request all the time. So if other, if other calls need those heroes, we can just keep them here already cached. And then that can really simulate for us um, going to a database and making those calls every time. At this point, we have the heroes cleaned up. So we should be ready to make some changes to our other components. So I'm gonna switch over here to this heroes component. And if we switch back to tour of heroes, we can see here that now we're gonna add a new hero. We're skipping over these HTTP sections. They're not required because we're just gonna use regular services in .NET. So I'm gonna grab this code here that we're gonna paste into our heroes component. So if I come back over here, I'm gonna make some space between our heading and our list here and just drop this div straight in. We're gonna to have to clean this up a little bit because the input's gonna look a little bit different since we're not gonna bind here on this input the same way. And uh, we're also gonna clean up uh, this click event. So on click is going to be to just add. And we're just gonna delete all this. The next thing we have to do is update this input. So to update that input, we're gonna do an at bind. And we're gonna set that equal to hero name. Let's do it like this. So we're gonna have a property hero name that this is gonna to bind to, and then we'll have an add, and then this add will actually take in this hero name from this input up here. So this is all right, but now we have to actually create this hero name and this add function. So if we come down here, let's create a private string hero name. I'm just gonna set this, set this to an empty string to begin with. And then right about here, let's drop a private async task add. And then we're gonna use our client to add a hero name. And if we go back up to client here, that's in our hero service. So we're going to add the hero name to, to the hero service. So we're, we're gonna have to first go into the iHero service and add, or add something to our interface here. Okay, so our add is gonna look like a task. And it's gonna have a hero array as a return type. Raise it wrong brackets again. And so let's do add and then string hero name. All right, we got that. Make sure I come back over here and save this one as well. And then, so now we can go update our hero service. So I'm gonna scroll down here and under get heroes, I'm going to paste in some code, and here we're, we have our new task of hero. It's going to be an async function, and we're going to add in the hero name. So we're going to use, we're going to create a list because that'll give us this order by descending when we add a link using statement to the top. So that lets us find out what our highest index is going to be on this hero item. So this is, so when we have that sort of, sort of index, all we have to do is grab the first one and grab the ID off of it so we know what the highest index is. And then what we're doing is just every time we add a hero, we're gonna make the next one the next highest index. Uh, 
this may or may not have bugs in it, but we're going to use that as the simplest way to do this, do this to get a unique ID here while we're not using a database and not using a real service. At this point, once we get a new hero using the hero name we passed in, generating this new ID that we're going to use, um, we're going to add this new hero. And then we can do uh, just a task factory new and add this or do this to array and then return this heroes. Um, there's really no there's really no reason for me to do this task factory start new here, but this is an asynchronous function and it kind of complains if you don't have an await. So I just arbitrarily threw that in just to do it. So let's go up to the top and include link so that we can get rid of this order by descending red squiggly. So, so it's just system dot link. And then this goes way down here and we've now managed to fix this I service. So we've added this add function and we've added to the heroes that we can do an add. So let's take a look now with .NET build, .NET run. And while this is building, if this is providing you some value, gently tap that subscribe button because you know we're not testing yet and I don't want to break anything on the page either. So here we're going to run and then let's reload this guy. And you can see now we have a field here where we can make a taco man and add taco man. And now he has a new ID. And if we do, let's just add Batman and hope no one sues us. You can see we have our add button working here. So at this point, we've added our add service. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a delete a hero. First, our component will have to update and then to the service we'll have to update as well. So moving over to our app in our heroes, we're going to throw in the delete button. So we now have a button with a class delete that we're probably going to update the CSS for later. But uh, then the title is going to say delete hero. And we're going to do a binding for the on click event of this button press. And we have to do that special at um, in parentheses where we're going to pass nothing into this function but because we're not just naming a function with no parameters, you have to do this lambda expression. So you call delete, and then we're gonna pass the hero from this for each loop. And then we're just gonna have an X in that button. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is come down to the code and add a delete. And I am just gonna copy this one super quick. Do a delete here. And we're going to pass the hero as a hero. Instead of add, we're going to do delete. And then I'm just going to put the hero here. And then this is complaining here because we don't have a delete function on our service. So let's go to the I hero service now. And again, we're just going to pull a task hero array back. Then our delete here will actually pass a hero. And we'll just call them hero here. So we're good there. So now let's jump over to the hero service and add in our hero. So here we're going to paste in what our delete code, which again is going to be async task hero array delete, and then we're passing in the hero. But this time we're going to take our heroes that we've saved before. And then we're going to do task factory start new heroes. Then we're going to use link again to say, go through all the heroes and remove any hero that is equal to the hero that I was passed in or, or actually, I'm sorry, I have that backwards. We're going to take all the heroes into a list that aren't the hero that was passed in. So I'll keep everything that's not matching the hero. I'll create that as an array and I'll return that. So that should just remove that one from our list. Do stop this, make sure all my files are saved. .NET build. And if you're getting value, hit the like button. And should have .NET run here. 
since that's going, I'm going to restart here. And now you can see this X that we've got here. We haven't updated the CSS yet, but I should be able to delete all of my heroes out of this list. So the next thing we have to add after add and delete is we have to be able to search by name. So they have this hero service and they added their search by heroes. They're gonna do some trimming and do some other things. We're gonna do our slightly different. So let's jump over to the code. And I guess the first place we should start is actually updating the hero service. So to update this hero service, we're going to add just a hero array. And if you notice, this one's no longer a task. Jumping into our hero service, if I just go down onto delete, our, our search is not going to be anything too special here. We're just going to return a hero array from search. And because we're using link, we can do this very easily in about one line. But we're going to take a search. It's going to pull in a string. And then we're going to grab our hero array and say, wherever the name, and then we're going to do two lower, but wherever that contains the text trim to lower, we're going to create that in an array. So basically all the heroes where the name matches the text that we have in there that's contained, our search here should be done. The next thing we have to do is we're going to create a component for the search. So the component that we're going to make is going to be called app hero search because that's how they named it in the tour of heroes app and i'm just going to paste the entire um, thing in here the css actually comes from down here if you come if you come look you can see that they have the css for all these components in here so this is where i grab the css from uh, otherwise you can check the description uh, below where I'll have my git repo also linked so you can look there if you want to. Um, this is really where I'm pulling my CSS from and where I'm pulling a lot of this uh, markup from. I just don't want to sit here and type it on camera because that's unpleasant for both of us. Back over here in the code that I pasted, we have, we still are injecting our client, our navigation manager, and our messaging service. We've got some a div that's telling it's our ID. There's really nothing too special here. This is all kind of the same as we've seen before. Um, we've gotten an, an ID. We're gonna bind a search box value to this input. Okay, so here we have the bind value event that says, as this is being typed, update the search box, which will then update this property down here that will update this search function. And so this is why that search function couldn't be asynchronous because it's getting called here in this event. And when it's asynchronous, um, Blazor doesn't really know what to do. Uh, I'm not sure if there's another way to call this asynchronous, but I didn't see anything in the documentation at the time of recording this video. Every time we type, basically this search box set gets called, which calls this search function. And we're gonna return the client search from the search box. And that should give us that updated list for, and then basically our for each at that point will take that filtered heroes array and show this on click to select the hero and the name and kind of give us uh, another details component like we had before and then we have our on select here so when on select happens we're just going to add something to the messaging service passing passing that name and then navigating to that hero detail just like we were doing in the heroes controller so it's the exact same code here as this on select. So we have our, we have an, an app hero search. So we're going to have to add this so that we can have it called from somewhere. And where we're going to add that is actually to our dashboard. So if we come back to our dashboard, we're going to add that right above this code line. So the search should be the last thing that happens in there. Dot build. There's a shortcut here. So here on this page, you can see that we added a hero search. So if we type in R, you can see that we get a list of everything with an R. We type a U, that event fires, we get the updated list. And so you can see this list, everything is showing up here. And if we click on it, 
we navigate over to those details. If I click the back button, we navigate back to this page. Um, so everything's everything's working just like we expected to. Create our CSS. So this was the style we had before. And I'm just gonna paste in here to add in our delete styles and update some other things. So one thing I wanna call out here is just recently, as of three days ago, um, .NET 5 Preview came out and they've actually added the CSS isolation. I may do a video on that after everything else is complete, but my next video is really gonna be on unit testing these Blazor components. So if you guys wanna see uh, how you do the CSS isolation, let me know, I'll make a video on it. But we're gonna build, we're gonna run, we're gonna refresh, and hopefully everything looks a little bit nicer. Our add button looks nicer. Our delete button looks nicer. I don't think that looks nicer, but it's what we got. Basically, all of this is working the way that it should be working. So in the next video, we're gonna take a look at unit testing, and we're gonna be doing some mocking and B unit.